Uh, this is a Fox News alert from Washington, D.C. I'm Elizabeth Pran. A violent explosion rocking a fertilizer plant in the town of West, about 20 miles outside of Waco, Texas. The entire plant becoming engulfed in flames. It happened just before 8 p.m. Central Time at West Fertilizer. That's the name of the plant outside of Waco. One witness reportedly describing a giant fireball shooting into the sky when this all happened. Another claiming to have heard the blast from as far away as 45 miles from the scene. Fox News that they're dealing with major injuries. In fact, we heard reports that up to 60 people have been to one hospital alone. Multiple structures and vehicles are also destroyed. We're told all available first responders are at the scene or they are heading to the scene, as well as six helicopters. We're hearing from local media and Waco reporting there may be there may be people or excuse me they may be trapped in nearby nursing homes or apartment buildings, and that includes children. But please keep in mind that Fox News has not independently confirmed that information. Evacuations are underway at numerous buildings nearby. We are hearing reports of major power outages uh, in the surrounding communities. We also know a number of triage centers have been set up close by to treat those affected by the potentially very toxic smoke. Uh, in fact, we have heard from Governor Rick Perry on this incident. He had released a statement saying that we are. They're monitoring developments and gathering information as well as details. They continue to emerge about this incident. We have also mobilized state resources to help local authorities. Our thoughts and prayers are with the people of West and the first responders on scene. Now keep in mind we are monitoring this major explosion that has occurred at a fertilizer plant in the city of West. That's in Hillsboro, Hillsboro so that's in north central Texas, not far from Waco. Reports are we're hearing a number of injuries and, and widespread building damage, uh, not just in that, uh, not just with the facility, but also blocks away. We're hearing reports uh, up to four blocks away. We are know that there are crews from multiple fire and rescue departments that have been called to the scene. If they're not already there, they are headed to the scene. Uh, we are hearing from Natalie Solis. I believe she's with our Fox affiliate, KDFW. Natalie, uh, can you hear me? Are you with us this evening? Yes, Elizabeth, I can hear you. Okay, I want you to, to bring us up to speed. Tell us, uh, tell us what's going on. We're looking at these pictures, and it, it's really it's unfathomable what we're looking at. Yeah, it is absolutely chaos here on the ground. Um, my position right now is just behind a, uh, a baseball field, and that is where they are bringing the people uh, that, that aren't seriously injured. But right in front of that is a community center, and that is one of the places where they are taking the people who need to be treated. They are also taking some of the injured to the VFW. I heard you mention before the first responders. I can tell you that there are first responders and law enforcement here from all over the place. I have seen sheriff's departments, uh, police officers, firefighters from all different small towns and cities, some of them, quite frankly, that I've never even heard of before in this area. Uh, but they are all here, and they are all pitching in to help, and there, it's it's chaos. I think one of the biggest challenges is just trying to, to coordinate and organize everybody who is here to help. And there is a lot that needs to be done. Um, but, okay, uh, now, now, now take us back to 8 o'clock tonight. This is when the explosion, am I correct? That's when the explosion occurred at 8 p.m. tonight. Tell us a little bit what happened. Do we know any details about why this happened? Right. Well, my understanding is, is that there was a, a fire that was, uh, that was at this uh, fertilizer uh, company and they I guess first responders went to respond to that fire and a little bit later on in the evening it rekindled and then that is when the blast happened and what changed from when that fire initially happened to the blast I'm, I'm really not sure since that blast though it has been all about trying to respond you know put out fires treat the injured so as far as the exact cause, I'm sure that'll be something that'll come out later. Okay, and I know uh, with any breaking news situation, the details uh, are slow and forthcoming, but we are getting reports of a pretty high death and possibly, or excuse me, injury and possibly death toll. Do you have any information that, that you can confirm with us about that? I, I have heard of 60 to 70, possibly 60 to 70 dead, and that sounds like a pretty high number, but judging by 
what I've seen here on the ground, it, it certainly isn't inconceivable uh, that, that that might be the case, and as well as uh, scores of others injured because, again, right now the focus is trying to get those people the help they need. And, and you know, part of the chaos is these families trying to, to find their loved ones and, and figure out are they among the injured, which location may they, might they be treated at. So uh, it, it's a lot going on, and, and yes, those are, those are numbers that... Um, you know, it's just right. devastating, especially for a small community. No, right. We'll keep uh, we'll keep in mind for our viewers at home that that is a number that we are working to confirm. But at this at this moment, with all this going on, we cannot confirm that is the exact number. But I want you to to give our viewers uh, sort of set the scene for us. Like you said, it's a small community, and we're hearing really. Uh, in fact, I heard one authority say it looked like a war zone. Are are all the is there damage to surrounding buildings? We're hearing that there's roofs which have collapsed. Can you sort of set the scene for us and tell us what you're seeing on the ground? Right. Okay. Well, I can tell you we are at about 20 miles north of Waco, and we come down, came down the interstate, um, and, and, you know, we came down. It was already dark, so what we are seeing right now, unfortunately, is a lot of the flashing lights, and by the time we got here, all the law enforcement, they were, you know, they're stopping everybody at every intersection, trying to direct everybody, trying to move everybody away from those areas where the houses were on fire, but hearing the same exact thing, that um, homes had caught fire, that there was a nursing home um, that had uh, that had caught fire, was damaged, and that there may have been people trapped there, uh, a school that also caught fire. So, uh, yeah, places all around, and I've heard the same thing about it being described as a war zone. I've talked to other people here on the scene who say, you know, who saw some of those parts and, and said how bad it, it was. Now, we have not been able to get to those parts because, again, they've been directing us away, but we didn't get, we were able to come to the area where they are bringing a lot of these people to try to get them the treatment they need. Yeah, you were talking about that triage center, which our viewers were able to get a look at um, earlier in our conversation. Aside from the triage center where people are, are getting treated for perhaps injuries that aren't, aren't deadly, are there hospitals nearby? Do you have any indication of how many people uh, have been taken to the hospital already? And are they still being taken to the hospital right now? I mean, it's, it's past midnight and this happened at 8 p.m. Yeah, I, gosh, the numbers, it's really hard to say. And, and part of the reason, again, is because there are so many first responders here. I have seen numerous ambulances coming and going. Um, hard to tell exactly where they're taking these people. Are they taking them directly to hospitals? Are they taking them just to another location? This, the, it's been very fluid on the ground. I think, as I mentioned before, uh, they were treating people in one location. They had to move that location, and then they moved it even again. So where they're taking these people is a bit unclear, but I know that a lot of people have been taken to area hospitals like to Waco and other uh, local medical facilities uh, to be treated. And then, you know, there are the ones here that are still getting treatment, for example, at the community center and at the CFW, and they're doing the best they can with the resources you know that they have on the scene. Do you know if anyone, uh, any victims have been life flighted? Were there helicopters used? What kind, what kind of uh, first responders were on scene? I, I, I'm, I would can say with almost certainty that people have been life flighted out. Um, when we arrived, it was, again, it was dark, but you could certainly hear all of the helicopters overhead. You could see some of their lights, and I'm sure that was a combination of, um, you know, first responders, of uh, news helicopters. Um, but I would have to imagine, given the level of devastation, that absolutely people um, had to be choppered out. All right, Natalie. Well, we really appreciate your reporting. Natalie Solis joining us from our Fox affiliate, KDFW. We, uh, we appreciate your time and, and go continue to gather more information for us and stay in touch and let us know if you do hear any updates. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. Joining us now, Casey Stiegel from our Dallas.